Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a hell of a challenge following on from that and these brilliant speakers. But it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm lucky, I think, to have one of the biggest, most challenging jobs in New Zealand to help steer Fonterra towards having a more sustainable approach to the way it does business on planet Earth. And it's a biggie. It starts with really, what the hell's the sustainability? I think that blows people away before we even start. The word itself, I describe it in terms of finding the right balance, the balance for now, the balance for a community between environment, foremost for me, the economics of product, community and social dimensions, and fundamental in New Zealand, also a cultural iwi, tino rangatira, tanga, recognition of the treaty provision going forward. So I've been in the job four years. We've started a journey. I've seen a turnaround that's quite significant in a short time, but there's a hell of a long way to go, and I'd be the first to say that. Might go the other way. That'll help, yeah. Okay, so Fonterra itself, 16,000 employees, biggest company in New Zealand by a long shot, $20 billion turnover. That's 3% of New Zealand's GDP. Large focus on innovation, constantly looking to break milk into its component parts to refine and then sell to particular markets globally going forward. Owned, interestingly, by the people who supply us the milk. The dairy farmers are also our shareholders. We, we gather and sell most of the milk from New Zealand, but increasingly having a presence globally, 20% now, perhaps up to a, a half of our milk might be sourced outside New Zealand within 2015 is, is the target time for that. We sell dairy ingredients and commodities primarily, not fresh milk. We think about fresh milk and cheese, but really that's just a tiny piece of what we do. Oh, I'm going to get this right now. A tiny piece of what we do in terms of delivering product to the world. We are the biggest trader of milk products in the world. Only 7% of milk produced as products is traded between countries, and we trade 3% of that, increasingly moving product from one continent to another in order to meet our customers' demands 365 days a year. And that's the future for the company. Our challenge, 9 billion people on planet Earth by 2050, 1 billion tonnes of milk product likely to be consumed by 2050, 2% growth in milk demand every year. That's the total production from New Zealand growing every year and the need for us to do that with a lighter and lighter environmental footprint, particularly as growing middle class in India and China have a penchant for dairy-based product. Challenge, meet the protein demand, do it in ways with a lighter footprint. The signals are clear. Henning Steinfeld in Livestock's Long Shadow, classic UN text says, we can't keep growing like this without doing damage. We certainly need to change it. Our market is saying it to us in their buy local campaigns, in terms of supermarkets being the new green god, we'll make the decision for you to make sure your product is the greenest available. Discerning consumers saying, I'll buy that rose on Valentine's Day from Kenya rather from Amsterdam because the carbon footprint is lighter and it provides better, more fulfilling employment opportunities in a country that needs it. So the response is more certification, more labelling, no question about it. The response is dairy globally, interestingly, out of Fonterra, having now an action plan around climate change to say, we share this, this is pre-competitive, we need to work on this together. And dairy similarly thinking about the next challenge, to think about nutritional needs of each of us and how they might be delivered with the lightest possible footprint. Some work on that. We've got to do it in order to retain our licence to operate. Our customers are wanting it, New Zealanders want it, and we need to provide the same opportunities that we've got today to future generations of New Zealanders. There's no question about that. How to do it? Well, the start is leadership. And it's great when Henry van der Hayden says to me, gosh, we've got to move this forward, haven't we? Where every board meeting now has sustainability on the agenda. We're foremost in the strategy of the company as a sustainable cooperative in the strategy going forward. 
We were starting to define targets. How aggressive is always a point of debate, making progress with that. Assisting farmers is critical. We now have a program called Every Farm Every Year. 10,300 suppliers will go visit them once a year, have a look at their effluent management infrastructure. If they're at risk of being non-compliant, non -compliant, we'll provide them free advice to get it right so that when the regional council regulator comes through the door, the chance of those dreadful statistics we've experienced is vastly diminished. We're looking to halve significant non-compliance within a year. We're spending three and a half million dollars that we weren't spending 18 months ago on that sort of program. We're helping our farmers with ag ITO style programs so that the farm worker who just wants to get off and have the beer on the Friday night tonight to say, hey, not until you've done the effluent and here's how you do the effluent to have that foremost in mind going forward. And to future-proof our investment, $20 million a year now thinking about solutions for tomorrow, potentially nitrification inhibitors, for example, that help keep the nitrates in the root zone not lost to groundwater or surface water going forward. That is our challenge. We're hard on ourselves in New Zealand, and we should be. The Yale Environmental Index rated New Zealand first in 2008, interestingly, second in terms of water quality in the 2010 environmental index that they compiled. We can't afford to be complacent. Against international indicators, we perform relatively well, but we've got to remember our future is dependent upon biological resources. We stuff them up, we stuff up our future, and I think that awakening is happening right now going forward. Key is to measure so you can manage. We spent a heap of money measuring the carbon footprint of five of our products delivered to 12 markets throughout New Zealand and got some really interesting results. First and somewhat obviously, 85% of the carbon footprint is on the farm. The cows, the bilch and the other end. S second key finding was that the so-called food miles, less than 5% of the carbon footprint, a minor minor component going forward. 10% only in our processing. 26 big factories throughout New Zealand, just 10%. So what does it do? It has us focus in on where the low hanging carbon might lie and then strip it out of the system. And where that, where is that going to be? Well, it's going to be first and foremost on better cows, better farmers and better farming. Better cows, interestingly, we've got a cow called Marge. By chance, natural cow, but she belches less and she has higher milk solids in her milk production. Go out and replicate Marge. So there's a natural replication process that will incrementally move us towards a more sustainable herd across New Zealand. Since 1990, our herd has improved in terms of carbon emissions by about 1% a year. We've got to sustain that by investing in the Pastoral Greenhouse Gas Research Consortium and the like, $12 million a year to stay ahead and lighten our carbon footprint on product earth. We've got to think about the transport of our products, more use of rail. What about taking the water out of the milk at the cow shed? Noting that milk is 87% water, so you're only transporting the fraction going forward. Euro 4 tankers, using rail absolutely. Bigger container vessels moving slower in terms of that supply chain in going forward. That's all, all critical. The biggest gains we've made so far in our processing facilities. Why have they happened? Simply because the best sustainability is reducing your environmental footprint by, while making money. And we've reduced our energy use by 13% since 2003. That's equivalent to the electricity used by a city the size of Hamilton. That's the stuff that is the low hanging fruit. The harder yards are the tough yards in terms of moving the company forward from here. So that's in essence where we are as Fonterra, we've got a long way to go. We are on a journey. We want to be at the leading and cutting edge of sustainable dairy in the world. We will achieve premium price from it. We've got to change the total way we do our business, and they're leading it from the top. Thank you.